Hi, welcome to the video solution for Red Excel Physics Pass paper. This is IEL Physics Unit 3, June 2014. Let's start. Question number one A student is measuring the length of a wire. He takes the following readings 1000 millimeter, 1002, triple nine millimeter, double nine eight millimeter. He should how should he record the mean length in his result table? 1 meter, 1.2 meter. Okay, if you see all options are given in meters, but the data was is in millimeters. So the first thing is we must convert these into meter after dividing by 1000. So we have 1.000 meter. 1.002 meter, 0.999 meter, 0.998 meter. And it's all about the mean length. So you add all these four. There is no anomalous reading. So you include all four sets of values, dividing by four. Then you will get answer from this is 0.99975. This is meter. So of course, because if you see all the data set has and and, and has has three decimal place, and we are adding all the three numbers, so our final answer should include three decimal place. So we cannot have option A and B is gone. What about C and D? C has three decimal place. D also has a three decimal places. But if you see due to this seven five, when you round this off, you won't have point triple nine. You have more than point triple nine. So you round it off till one point triple zero. So your option is C. Question number two, which of the following could not be a unit for pressure? Pressure is force per unit area. That means unit of force divided by unit of area. And Pascal, this Pascal is Newton per meter square or Newton meter minus two. This is also a unit of pressure this is pressure Newton per millimeter square again this is force per unit area this is also area millimeter square so this is also a unit of pressure option a clo Newton this is force this is area but this is not force per unit area these are uh, this is force into area and there is nothing to do with the pressure with this relation so kilo newton meter square cannot be or could not be a unit of pressure so your option is a three a wire is stretched by a constant force the extension will be directly proportional to the young modulus length of the wire diameter and area cross section of course it is the length of the wire and you can understand this relation from the equation of a strain a strain equal to delta L over L and if for any given instant a strain if you take a strain is a constant term so delta L is equal to epsilon into L for any given instant okay this is constant at that moment and then delta L is proportional to the length and originally uh, how much extension there will be depends on the length that we are taking L longer the length larger the extension so option is B Question number four and five refers to the graph below. The graph shows how a potential, the, the potential difference V 
across a power supply varies with the current I in an electric circuit. Which of the following is the correct description of the relationship between V and I? They are directly proportional. No, they are not directly proportional. Even we have a straight line, but this straight line is is not showing the relation of directly proportional. For directly proportional, we have a line going up. Uh, even for, pos for, for positive cor correlation, we have a up. Inversely proportional? No. We have inversely proportional graph as a curve. Yes. Option is C. So if you see, the linear relationship means we have a linear line and it can be moving up or coming down. But it, as it is not a direct relation, so we can say that it is a linear relationship. So option is C. Question number five, which of the following is the magnitude of the gradient of, of the graph? For the gradient, you will take this point and take this point and you find rise over run. So the gradient is 10 divided by minus 4.6. So your answer will be minus 2.17. If you see in your option, negative sign is not given. So we can ignore this negative sign. In fact, if you see this is the graph of V and I and we have a negative gradient. For V and I graph, negative gradient, in fact, this negative gradient shows internal resistance, minus R. So this minus, this minus gets cancelled and you have option answer 2.17 and rounding this off, so you have 2.2. So option is C. Today's internationally accepted values for the speed C of electromagnetic radiation in a vacuum is 299792.458 plus minus 0 0.001 kilometer per second. In 1883, Newcomb determined a value for C which he stated as 299850 plus minus 30 kilometer per second. Explain how his stated uncertainty shows the new that Newcomb must have underestimated the uncertainties in his measurement okay so idea is we need to see whether the value values of newcom lie lies under or within the range of accepted value so if you find the range of accepted value if you find the range of accepted value is the lower range is 299792.457 to 299792.459 this is the range of accepted value what about the range of Newcomb value. So Newcomb value, the range is 299820 till 299880. If you see the lower range of Newcomb is outside is outside the range of uh, the accepted value. And it is due to underestimation of the uncertainty. If Newcom had stated something like uh, 50 or maybe 55 or 60, or you can give some range from 50 to 60 or 55 to 60, that means uh, it would have better value than this. That's why plus 30 is underestimated uncertainty. So here you can write your answer.
it's up to you i guess uh, if you put 50 here it also works or 65 is also fine In 1926, Michelson determined a value for C, which he stated as 299796 plus minus 4 km per second. Comments on the value determined the Michelson. Again, if you find the range of Michelson value, which is 299792, lower range, and 299. 800 so the lower range 792 within the lower range of your accepted value that means ne uh, michelson uh, value for c is much better than the newcomb value and also it has a small uncertainty compared to Neocon. Calculate the percentage uncertainty claimed for today's internationally accepted value for C. So percentage uncertainty is in, in accepted value. For accepted value, this is your uncertainty this is your measured value and percentage uncertainty how do you find we divide uncertainty 0 0.001 divided by measured value which is 299792.458 and multiply by 100 so your answer will be 3.3 uh, into 10 to the power minus 7 percent this is percentage uncertainty in accepted value of C question number seven a student is asked to determine a value for the acceleration of free fall G by timing a falling steel ball the diagram below shows the apparatus to be used uh, the steel ball falls a distance s from the electromagnet okay to the switch x the electronic timer records the time taken t the student is told to plot a graph of s against t square write a plan for an experiment to determine g using this method you should draw on diagram draw on the diagram the distance has to be measured so this is the diagram and uh, from here till here this is the distance to be measured. This is the distance between uh, a steel ball start falling and the trap door. Part B state uh, the apparatus required to measure S and explain your choice. S is the distance. We use meter rule. To measure the height and because it's a precision 0.1 centimeter so meter rule is appropriate for this measurement explain why an electronic timer is used to measure the time because the distance fallen is too short uh, so it will the, the electronic timer will measure a reliable time because if you use a stopwatch so it will involve a reaction time and less reliable result so you can write like this because of the very small distance time I will give more reliable result or even you can say that distance is too short a stopwatch involved reaction time so less reliable result 
both are acceptable. Comments on whether repeat readings are appropriate in this case? Yes, of course. Repeat reading is uh, is appropriate because we can use uh, mean value, average value to reduce random error or to get more reliable result. Explain what data will be collected and how it will be used to determine G. From this experiment, we are going to measure the time, time of fall for a given height. This is the first quantity and for a given height or you can say it is a distance s if we have a multiple reading or, or, or a different reading for time and corresponding height then we can plot a graph between distance or height on y-axis and t square on x-axis and we can expect a straight line And from the straight line, if you calculate the gradient, so the gradient will give you distance over t square. And if you see in this experiment, in these kinds of experiment, we generally use s equal to ut plus half a t square. And as initial velocity is zero, if you go back and see the situation initial velocity is zero so our equation is s is equal to half of a t square and if you make a as a subject so a would be equal to 2 s by t square so we can from this equation if initial velocity is zero so we can find acceleration as two times of distance over t square. Now, if you compare this and with our gradients, s upon t square, that means s upon t square is the gradient. So acceleration can be found two times of the gradient. And this acceleration, in fact, will be acceleration due to gravity. That's how we use our data to determine the acceleration due to gravity. This is part E. F, identify the main sources of uncertainty and systematic error. So uh, main sources of uncer uncertainty, we have a uh, parallax error because we are using meter ruler. So we could have a uh, uh, a parallax error and there might be a systematic error in in timer comments on safety uh, it involves regarding electricity it involves low voltage so we don't have any hazards regarding the voltage but we have a steel ball falling falling down so we should take care of this falling object and we can uh, wear a protective shield or maybe a safety shoes these kinds of stuff question number eight a student carried out an experiment to determine the speed v of sound in air she used a musical instrument shown in which standing waves are produced by blowing into instrument to vibrate the air inside uh, the length L of the vibrating air column is changed by covering the holes this changes the frequency F of the sound produced she measured F for different values of L her results are shown in the table this is length and frequency criticize her result again similar and a typical question so you can write less number of reading in consistent significant figures you can see 
and uh, of course no repetition is there so you can write complete the last column of the table below so the last column is 1 upon L that means you take reciprocal of the of the line and if you want to take reciprocal your answer of this column 1 upon L will be uh, this you will be wondering that why I have a 10 what did I do here if you see the unit the unit was given in in centimeter so before dividing I converted this centimeter into meter that means first I divided 10 divided by 100 that means 0 0.1 meter and then I took reciprocal that means 1 upon 0 0.1 and it will give you 10 and throughout I'm using one decimal place uh, for consistent significant figures you can do similar for rest of the things so first convert this into meter 12.5 divided by 100 so you would have answer 0 0.125 and then take the reciprocal 1 upon 0 0.125 will give you 8 okay plot the graph of f on the y-axis against 1 upon l on the x-axis on the grid provided and draw a line of best fit so these are your values this is the graph remember you choose wise scale scale wisely i'm sorry yes so that you can cover more than 50 percent of your area so this is frequency in hertz this is one upon l in meter minus one and these are the values these are the points corresponding points so for 10 you have 1719 for 8 you have 1375 for 6.9 double one eight five and so on and this is the line of best fit D determine the gradient of your graph gradient we choose two points on the line and we find rise over run gradient so these are two points the, the black one this one and this one and if you see the graph these are the coordinates and from this coordinate if you calculate the gradient so gradient would be equal to 1600 minus 930 divided by 9.3 minus 5.5 .5 and your gradient would be equal to 176.3 this is your gradient and if you see the gradient uh, on the y-axis you have frequency values and on the x-axis you have 1 upon L so in fact your gradient is in term of variable is frequency divided by 1 upon length that means if you simplify this your gradient is frequency into length this is the product of frequency and the length keep this thing in your mind we might need it it's just for your understanding The equation for the graph is f is equal to v by 2l. Calculate the value of v. 
if you see the equation, we need to calculate the V. So we make V as a subject. So V is equal to twice of FL. And if you see, this FL is a gradient that we found. So V is in fact two times of gradient, meaning two times of uh, 1.76 one uh, so let me just check yeah it is 176.3 so you can figure out the value So answer is B is 352.6 meter second inverse. This is the velocity. Okay, the accepted value for V is 330 meter per second. Assuming your calculations are correct, suggest so why there is a difference between your values for V and the accepted values. Of course, we we might uh, have some error in our measurement, and uh, moreover, the second thing is the speed of sound depends on the temperature of that day. So there might be some error in our measurement, like in length and the frequency. The speed of sound depends on the temperature. Thank you very much. Have a nice time. Save.